you do not understand white supremacy, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you do understand will confuse you. In all of these nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, anywhere on the planet, minute by minute, day by day, all of the time, all of the time, all of the time. Good morning and welcome to the March the 19th edition of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and we are absolutely delighted that you have elected to join the program today. We would like you to get in contact with the show, and I will provide you with the numbers that you can do that with, 516-453-9921 is the number. And when the call screener does, come on, give the call screener your name, and um, you wait until um, you are queued in. If you happen to be a first-time caller, you do the exact same thing. However, when the uh, call screener uh, asks you your your name, make sure that you give them your name and tell them that um, you are a first-time screen uh, caller. And um, we have something special set up just for you so that you can <clears throat> be heard. Uh, okay. Secondly, if you do not want to use that, you can also Gmail me at this address, the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, M-R-B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. I will read it when the time is appropriate, and I will let you know. You can hear yourself or your um, comment on um, the radio at a certain time. I don't know the date that that would happen, but it will happen. All right, now please do not write me a long one. <laughs> I cannot, we don't have time in, in this two hour window that we have been granted. And lastly, you chat room, and all you have to do to join the chat room is uh, go to blogtalkradio.com. Then you want to click on where it says the program, the program menu. You click on that, and then um, you want to look for its shows. The shows that come up and the show that you want to come up is the Produce Justice Show. You click on that one, and the chat room square or window becomes available for the, for you, and you can get in that and uh, go from there. <clears throat> Those are the ways to do that. Uh, let's see here. Since you're online, most of you, or listening, you can do this. Uh, Mr. Fuller. Was on the uh, Carl Nelson show last week, and if you did not get a chance to hear it, uh, it is on our website at producejustice.com. And speaking about producejustice.com, the books that Mr. Fuller or book that he will be speaking about uh, today um, will will be from that, and you can go to the website and get that book at producejustice. Dot com. That's producejustice.com. Okay, I think that is it. Yes, okay, that's it. Okay, let's proceed with the show. Uh, let me say, first of all, good morning, Mr. Fuller, and how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm still learning. Okay. Well, let me pre- <laughs> let me present to others, to some and uh, introduce Mr. Fuller to those who are newly listening to the program. Now remember, well, keep this in mind that when Mr. Fuller is speaking about something, he gives a lot of examples, and most of the time you're probably not going to get it, so you have to give it time because he does use logic and he uses a lot of examples to illustrate his point because we do not want confusion to um, be a part of the program. We do not want that, so make sure that you keenly listen to the program. I'll listen to what he is saying, and then uh, we can go from there. 
Okay, we have a segment that we have that uh, we do just about every show, and it's called The Thoughts and Expressions on the Mind of Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Mr. Fuller, today being the 19th of March, 2024, what is on your mind this morning? Uh, The same thing last week. I'm going to keep underlining that, uh, at least for this month, Mm -hmm. because... I'm talking about the women's month. Uh, and black women in particular throughout the entire world, wherever they are, uh, lots of things are being said that need to be said. And so I guess I'll just join that group. Because for one thing, one thing I keep hearing repeatedly is that black females all over the world are the most abused people on the planet. And that's either true or false, but I say I have reason to believe that it's true when I stop to think about it so far. you know, it's saying black females are the most abused of all people on the planet. That's a flat statement. So the code, which is what I talk about, requires me to always go with the truth. So the question would be, is that true? And if it is true, and I have no I have no reason to believe it's not true until somebody shows me, I'll say, Well, that means that somebody should react to that if that statement is true in the most constructive manner. Because what everybody on the planet should be doing every minute of every day is doing only that which is most constructive. So therefore, what do you do about that? If black females are the most abused people on the planet, you stop doing it, logically speaking, because no one is supposed to be abuses, just another word for mistreatment, no one ever under any circumstance is supposed to be mistreated for any reason. And so if that's true, you look and see if it's true first. And if that is true, and I have no reason to believe that it's not true, it means, okay, abuse, mistreatment. How? By If you're going to stop it. Well, for one thing, you can start by, in a codified manner, because once something comes to your attention, it should be codified, meaning you find out what's the best thing to do, that's what codification means, and stick with it till you find something better, and the best things not to do. So I came to the conclusion immediately, if that's true, then don't do anything or say anything that constitutes abuse or mistreatment of any kind against black females. The most mistreated people on the planet is a black female. Then don't do anything and don't say anything at any time against black females and I asked myself well what uh, what if they're doing things that shouldn't be done you point out that it shouldn't be done the act shouldn't be done but then you shouldn't speak against the person who is that way because the person is being abused You can expect the most abused people on the planet 
to do things that most people wouldn't approve of. That's logical. But you also give the reasons. Say, yes, black females do this or do that or say this or say that. Or I know of one who did this and did that. Or I know of a lot of them who have done this or said that. But why? See, that, that's one of the questions that should always be asked under any circumstance involving anything or anybody. Why are they doing it? How did they get to the place of state of mind where they are doing it? And things that you may not approve of. You can say you don't approve of the things that are done, but you give well, who did it? You say it's a black female. You say, well, you can expect that type of behavior from a person who is being constantly abused or has been so severely abused, logically speaking, that you can expect that type of behavior. So, I just want to reiterate what I said about it before, mm -hmm. because it really is important. Okay. Black females, since this is last, last month was Black History Month, she's a part of that. <clears throat> this month, they'll say you have, a, for example, a black legislator. And they'll say, that woman is just as silly as she can be. I don't know, you know, blah, 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 blah. Stop doing that. Just agree or disagree with some things that are being done. But don't give verbal abuse to the woman by doing any name calling of any kind. Don't say she's silly. Point out the thing that's being done and say you don't agree with it. And then you make, when you don't agree with somebody doing something, then that means you got a better suggestion. So the thing to do is to concentrate not so much on the person who did or said something, but on whether or not what was being done or said can be replaced with something better. Mm -hmm. And so you make a suggestion about what would you think would be better and say why. And that way you have what you call going in the direction of a civilized discussion rather than arguments and name calling. That's all I have to say about that right now. Okay, right now. Okay. Anybody who disagrees can say so and say why. Oh, yeah, obviously. Okay. 516-453-9921 is the contact number to uh, today's uh, programming. Um, we didn't do this last week, and hopefully we will get, or I will get a chance to make mention of it and get your observations, uh, Mr. Fuller, and also um, from the uh people who are listening, and that is uh, from the Shawshank Redemption, some points that uh, we want that I want to bring out, and let's see what's happening there. Now, before we go into the regular programming for today, uh, Mr. Fuller, if, if I may, I, I'd, I'd like to say this, and this is particularly to the men or brothers that are listening to the uh, program, and this is very, very important. It's in the area of health. Um, I had a... Uh, prostate screening uh, yesterday and of course uh, I went a week before and got the blood test and all that kind of stuff and all the results you know were fine and the, the doctor um, you know checked me and you know and in, in, in that area you know it, it's good I bring that out because brothers and I don't know if you've observed this Mr. Fuller or others but we don't talk we don't talk about that we'll talk about the game or some gal or something like that, but we don't talk about our health issues. And it's a real simple procedure 
that is done. Uh, to, uh, now, you know, he, uh, is it invasive? Yes, it is invasive, but it's necessary. It's necessary to go and get that done. Please, brothers, you need to do that so that you can have a reasonable portion of health. A reasonable portion of health. I was thinking about that because, as Mr. Fuller said uh, many times, that the answer to any problems is to ask questions. But we don't talk about that, and that really disturbs me. Now, I don't know how you feel about that. If you're over 45 or whatever, go and get it done. Schedule it and get it done and have them, have the doctors, you know, do that so that you can be checked out okay so you can still do what we have to do in this struggle against racism, white supremacy. Mr. Fuller, you have a thought on that before we take any questions? Health is number one. Health is number one. I put it in the economics. But uh, and a lot of it comes from not eating correctly. All right? And uh, anything that they call have regular checkups about. And you should find out what they, they are. It's a list of them, really, uh, that comes out ever so often. I, I just... What I do, I contact my primary care a doctor and say, I want to take every test that you got that they say it's important to have. And so the doctor does just that. Uh, some of it I don't even understand or I just heard about, but if it's on that list, Particularly every now and then, in fact, quite frequently, they give most of the things. Uh, the medical profession puts out lists of things and also the statistics that's killing black people. So I just say, what's on the list? That's my position. Yes, sir. Uh, colon, cancer, or whatever it is. Yes, sir. I, I want to be tested. Yes, sir. I want to be tested for whatever it is that's doing this damage. They say this is a high rate of this and and uh, what is most likely to cause a stroke or a heart attack, would not, and how you can take a test to head it off, would not put me on the list. Yes, sir. Okay. Say, well, you don't even know what it is when I put it on the list. I'll figure out what it is later on. <laughs> But if it's supposed to help me, health-wise, I want to take it. Yes, sir. Okay. Period. Mm -hmm. Every okay. type of test. Okay. Well, I just Say, well I we got about 15 or 20 things on here. Well, schedule me for all of them. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> particularly, though, that we get. I just thought I would throw that out there because I'm very concerned, particularly because we don't talk. We talk mm -hmm. about everything else, but we do not talk. We do not ask questions. And that really disturbs me, particularly when it comes to health, when things can be done about it. Okay, enough of that. Let's go to the phone line. Just thought I would throw that out there. Corey, get ready. We're coming to Milwaukee here. And let's see here. Get this thing rolling. Okay, Corey, you're on, Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Um, Mr. Fuller, um, I wanted to continue with what you were speaking about in terms of uh, – Black females and this being uh, Women's History Month. Um, I was reading in the cold book, the 2016 edition on page 33 at the bottom, um, and it's, it's speaking about racial sexual confusion. Um, Mr. Fuller, can you express how, for for maybe new listeners and people who aren't familiar with the cold book and myself as well get more clarification. Mr. Fuller, can you please express how sexual confusion among non-white people is one of the major ways that the white supremacists maintain, expand, and or refine the practice of white supremacy? Can you explain how, how, um, how the problems that we have, the sexual confusion that we have as black people, instead of blaming the black female, 
how we need to blame the system of racism, white supremacy, for the sexual oh. confusion. Okay, Corey, thank you. Mr. Fuller? Any kind of confusion among black people under the system of white supremacy is the fault. If you're going to place blame, it is square on the shoulders of racist man and racist woman, the white supremacists of this entire planet. They're the most powerful people. They put things on people's minds more than anybody. They're the greatest information, sources of information, both constructive and non-constructive. And so they make sure that whatever non-white people are doing, that's the white supremacists, the racist man and racist woman, it's going to be non-constructive for non-white people. That's why you have white supremacy. That's what they do. Any contacts that they make, regardless of how it looks on the surface, the white supremacists have one thing in mind, keeping the system of white supremacy going. It's the most powerful, the most comfortable system for white people that has ever been thought up for people who are classified as white. It has defects and whatnot, like all systems do, that are not perfect and whatnot. And since the system of white supremacy itself is set up to damage people Mm -hmm. by the millions, they have to cover everything that people are involved in. And that's everything in all areas of activity. You can't nothing let anything slip by. And that includes sex. You got nine areas of activity economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex and war. Now the white supremacists make make sure that they are dominant over non white people in all of these areas of activity, 24 hours a day of every day. And every move that a non-white person makes, and particularly, this applies to sex. Sex is a very strong emotion, sexual emotions. Extremely strong. I mean, uh, the Bob Hope, I'll just give that as an example. World War II. Uh, he comes out on the stage. He was a comedian. And he had uh, what then was considered half naked. And that's a female white female in a swimsuit. And he said, in case you guys, you know, people ask you a whole bunch of questions about what World War II is really all about, that this is what everybody understands it's really all about. And he would bring out somebody like Betty Grable, uh, who was a top movie star at that time, in her swimsuit. Uh, her pictures was hanging hanging up somewhere all over the world. I mean, a picture of Betty Grable. I mean, with looking over her shoulder while she's wearing a swimsuit, showing you her figure. Uh, and it's a famous photograph. And you find it overseas in barracks and tents and, and dugouts and foxholes and whatever among all the white soldiers and sometimes the black ones, all right? This is what you're fighting for. So I'm just giving an illustration of they say, hey, this is, you mean all this killing and whatnot? <laughs> yeah, 
All of it. That's what, when you boil it right down at the end of the day, it's all about sex. It's all about, you know, when you hear about a soldier going over the hill, meaning deserting his unit, where will you find him when you send the military police to get him? In his girlfriend's house, all right? Or somewhere in the neighborhood where she is, or his wife. He's getting Dear John letters. I found somebody else. I mean, so I'm forgetting about you. And he's on the battlefront, so he's missing now. So you say he ain't missing in combat. He's going to try to find that girlfriend or his wife who ran away with somebody else. I heard a thousand of those stories, even when I was in the military. You know, when they said somebody's on AWOL. That's what it was about. So what's the point that I'm making? Sex is very strong. It can get you in real trouble real fast. The white supremacist said, you know what? We don't have to worry about black people in no other area of activity if what we do is mess up their minds when it comes to sex. Now, somewhere along the way, they came to that conclusion, and they ran some experiments. And evidently, a few tests said, yeah, if you can confuse black people sexually, you can confuse them about everything. And so they like the white supremacists are very scientific. So they said, you know, what you people are doing, you, you are centered too much on this male-female thing. You think that a male has to be this paired off with a female. That ain't necessarily so. And then they demonstrate, see, because anything that you're trying to trick people into, you first got to do some of it yourself. Otherwise, you won't have any credibility. Black people are not that stupid. So they say, well, white folks are doing it. So it must be great. Well, they wouldn't be doing it. Well, see, they are doing it, and they're winking their eyes. They say, well, hell, we, we're going to make plenty of examples of how successful this is. And then they say, well, if one example is pretty good. Let's give two or three. And, you know, finally they say, well, if two or three is going over pretty well, because black people always pick up anything they think is new. Don't make no difference what it's about. If it looks like it's new, because they're always looking for something different. They're tired of being in the situation they're in. So they say, then they start coming up with, well, let's just have a different type of sexual activity for every alphabet. How many alphabets we got? I'm just saying that this looks like where they're going because they keep adding alphabets. The latest one I've heard about is something called AI, uh, artificial intelligence, where they say we want a lot of artificial sex. So let's get black people to center on that. Anytime they start talking about anything, housing or, uh, or reparations and whatnot, say, no, 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 no. That, that, that's not a priority. What you need to do, you people need to do with your dumb selves, is try a new form of sex. And I got truckloads of forms for you to fill out. And black people, they ran a few tests. We're falling for it. I mean, we're walking right into that trap. Faster than we've fallen for anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's what... Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Do some more of that. Get me involved in it. And that's, it's real simple. For the last mm -hmm. 50 years, it's working. It's working like a charm. And they say, well, what's wrong with it? But that's the way we are about anything. Mm -hmm. The white supremacists say, hey, these people are so stupid you can lead them by the nose or anything. So we will make, since sex is so strong, the sexual urge, we are going to lead them by the nose into every kind of nonsense that you can possibly think of. 
and that's where we are. They say, hey, they are putting such a priority on that. We don't need to even try to fool them about nothing else because nothing else matters to them. Hmm. Okay. Now, we are either that way or we are not. Now, let everybody say men or everybody say no, fool, you got this one wrong. We ain't that stupid. Oh, 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 well, it's either true or false. Hmm. Okay. And well. is it constructive? See, the code always looks for that. Is this a constructive activity? And if so, what's constructive about it? I had, mm-hmm. I used to have a girlfriend. Now I got a girlfriend. I got a boyfriend. I got a juvenile boyfriend. I got a, uh, well, might as well throw in the white woman on that, or imitation white woman. Uh, and I'm going to, Oh, one of the biggest events I want to take part in is uh, Spike Shoes, uh, High Heel Day for every black male. And yeah, and, and all these alpha black males, uh, whatever you could want to call them, who are just restricting themselves to females, they're a bunch of fools. If that's what they're doing. Every last one of them. They don't want to be up to date. You got to get hey, that's all you got? A female, wife, a girlfriend? And and talk, talking about a family? Hey, you gotta have ten, fifteen, thirty different types of families if you up with it. I mean, you know, you better get with it. I mean, you're behind times. You know, you're old-fashioned. And the white supremacists said, we got them. <laughs> we got them. We got them. We can jerk them around in every area of activity now with no sweat. Because their priorities now is to put on their mother's dresses. Hmm. Wow. Okay. All right, Corey, there you go. There's your answer right there. We're way over, so we're going to take a break right here. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and we do thank you for um, getting into the show. Appreciate it. But the contact number uh, to do that, for those of you who are just getting in, and Christopher, by the way, I just clicked you off, so call back in so we can get you back on here. Here's the contact number. It's 516-453-9921. Again, 516-453-9921. And uh, you get right back in here and um, have Mr. Fuller answer your questions. Uh, He's going to talk about the book that he has written, which you can get by going to ProduceJustice.com. That is ProduceJustice.com. You can do that, and uh, he was on the Carl Nelson Show last week. That's also on ProduceJustice.com, ProduceJustice.com. Okay, I believe that is it on this segment. Oh, yeah, men, men, if you're over 45, please, please go and get your uh, prostate uh, screening. I think there's, you have to do a blood test a week before, and they do all that and give you all the results of that. And then the doctor, um, then you go to the doctor the next week. At least, at least, at least that's how mine goes. And then you go in there and discuss if they found anything, or and then they check it to make sure that it's not swollen or anything like that. Uh, and you know whatever procedures need to be to be done, they will. Um, they will take care of that uh, for you and let you know. And any other health screenings, we as particularly as black men, but I'm just speaking about men, period, we don't talk, and that really bothers me. We don't discuss nothing except for sports or something like that or maybe some girl or something like that. But when it comes down to health, we don't, we don't say nothing 
and that uh, that really really bothers me. So anyway, uh, for all the uh, men that are listening, you know, to today's programming, please go and get a you know go get check yourself out, get yourself checked out to make sure nothing is wrong, so we can stay in this fight against racism and white supremacy. Okay, uh, Christopher, I accidentally uh, pushed the wrong button, so you got off. Clicked you off, didn't mean to do that, but that's how it happens. But if you call back in, tell the call screener about this so they can um, put you right back in uh, the rotation and you'll go to the top of the line here. Let me see here to make sure you're not in here yet. Okay. All righty. Anyway, in the meantime, in the in between time, let's go to uh, Youngstown, and that's that's my man, to leave to live. You are on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, uh, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. Yes, everybody's listening. Hope everybody's well. Um, but you're right. The prostate thing, I'm not sure if Mr. Fuller uses the VA, but the VA did mine in my primary care physician. She's pretty good at the VA. So I'm not sure if Mr. Fuller uses his VA benefits, but the VA, if, if you guys are veterans, the VA will... Far, well, as far as my experience, will pretty much take care of pretty much anything that you have. I know some some guys complain, but I don't know if Mr. Fuller uses his, but I use mine, and they take care of you pretty good. Um, also, there are a lot of a lot of different things that we don't talk about, Mr. Bobby and our really. Not only health, we don't talk about the sexual predators, but I, I won't get into that so much. But it's not only that. We don't talk about how to build wealth and how to grow. Exactly. And Mr. Fuller, you and Mr. Fuller, you you mentioned when you said, "Oh, we not are oh, we not that dumb?" Yeah, we are that dumb. Every year, every other year, it comes the Democrats and the Republicans vote for me, and I set you free. But like Mr. Bobby said, we never come together as a group and say, "Why don't we try to help do for self?" But speaking to that, Mr. Fuller. Um, you've been around quite a while, and I'm sure this game has always been run. But if you notice, there's always a so-called blackface on either on either side, Republican or Democrat, that come on with fear mongering. If you don't vote for Trump, he's there. If you don't vote for Biden, vote for Obama. Well, Mr. Fuller, um, why is it that we and and, and I know you probably mentioned this before on the show, but why are we so afraid by Mr. Bobby say things that we don't talk about and sit behind closed doors and say, you know what, we've been a part of this system so long. Why don't we come together and at least, um, I think it was John Henry Clark that said, at least make a pamper for your own baby. We we buying third third grade junk for people that don't like us anyway. So Mr. Fuller, You've been around a lot longer than most of us. Why is it that, because in the 20s and 30s we had to have our own businesses because they wouldn't support us anyway. Why are we so afraid, like I, I always say, to get off the plantation? And one more thing I want to say about the the so-called black women being unprotected. Well, they don't treat each other too well, Mr. Fuller. So, I, But I do want you to answer me that question because people get mad at me. I don't say happy birthday, Merry Christmas, because... Those are something that somebody else gave us. So why are we so afraid, Mr. Fuller, to act like we want to do things on our own and still want our oppressors to take care of us? And, Mr. Bobby, I'll listen, but, but Mr. Bobby okay. is right, people. Take care of your health and your wealth. There's two things that we should do as a people, nope. and, and, and Claude Anderson will call it group economics. But, Mr. Bobby, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I beat that to death with my family, and it's still not happening yet. Okay. All righty. Mr. Fuller? Well, black people all over the world, because we're talking about a world problem, yes. are under the system of white supremacy. That's what that means. So that's not a priority for us. We don't wake up in the morning and go to bed at night like I do, but collectively thinking about one thing. How do you get rid of this system and replace it with something better? Every black person on the planet should have that in mind as the life's mission. We don't have any other mission other than that. And if you make any other mission other than that, 
then you're not on your J-O-B. And why are we this way? Because the white supremacists got us just trying to impress each other. And that's as far as we ever want to go. Black people just want to, you know, I'm, uh, how well I can get other black people. You know, you got presidents, so-called, of countries. All they want to do is strut around talking about their president of their countries when they're not a president over nothing. Why? Because the white supremacists are running their entire system, directly or indirectly. And there's not a one of them that can say otherwise, because there's no evidence of that being otherwise. So it's not just here. It's everywhere. There's no such thing as a black person being in charge of anything anywhere on this planet. Zero. Just find out, you know, who's running things here indirectly. Mm-hmm. And they say, well, it's not even no white people here. We're all together here, all of us black people. I say, how do you eat? Where does, you, you, do you drive a scooter? Uh-huh. Okay, and you, I, I'm looking in. The, I'm in. I'm in your country. I'm looking out the window. Where do those scooters come from? Where <clears throat> does the concrete come from? Mm-hmm. I see ships in the harbor. Where do those ships come from? Why are they here? Did you build any of those ships that are coming from here and there, sir, ma'am? Just asking. Yeah. What do you build here? Oh, we we got oil refineries here. We got this. Oh, okay. Let me wash me over there. Uh huh. Name of this company? Okay, take me to the front office. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, yeah. You know, are you a white man? Yes, I am. Are you born and raised here? Yes, I was. Where are your people from and who who runs this company? I run the company. Uh, but, uh, the president, I get my orders from him. He's black. And, uh, my people are from Finland. And, uh, they are, you know, we, we got the telegraph system here and all this and whatnot. Because we don't have enough educated people here to take care of much of anything. So, uh... We send a bunch of them to Finland to learn how to do this, that, and the other. <clears throat> oh. So, in other words, the people from Finland are running everything here in your country, and you black, that matters. You wouldn't even have an economic system if it wasn't for all those Investors and whatnot, that's what they call themselves, actually, they've taken over the economy. Uh, well, no, you can't put it that way. Uh, after all, I am in charge. Oh, oh, you're the front man for Finnish countries. Uh, oh, oh, I see how that works. That's what we got everywhere on the planet. Yes. Truth be told. It's called white supremacy. White supremacy. Okay. And that's why you see black people everywhere saying, i got to get out of Haiti. Mm-hmm. Yes. i got to get question. out of Haiti. Mm-hmm. Now, this thing, your suggestion about having our own people in Haiti, they say they are independent. And 
been saying that for years. People in Liberia, they call it Liberia, liberated people. Go there and take a look and see who runs everything. Just take a look. Or ask somebody who is there, born and raised there. I mean, a, a, a bona fide, to the bone, Liberian. And just, just ask them just a straight up question. They'll say, well, I run it. Say, well, who runs you? Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Ask questions. Like mm -hmm. Mr. Bobby said, ask questions about everything. Just don't go by what you see on the surface. Exactly. Who runs you? And you can ask all the black people here. Ask me who runs me. I know I do some running when I can to keep up. Who's running me? Ab absolutely. The white supremacists run yep. Neely Fuller Jr., including they run his his book off of their press. Yeah, why? That's, that's right. He ain't got no press. That's why. And a whole lot of people that claim that they got one. Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. check on that. Hmm. That's the uh, reality of the uh, situation that you have to come to, uh, have to come to. As a matter of fact, that was one of the. Th uh, thank you, Talib. Uh, Talib, that was one of the things that um, that was uh, on the points that, that that I had to make or was going to make. And that was a good question, Mister Fuller. Who who runs stuff? You have to come to that reality. You have to know. And this is what the book. This is what the book, the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. A course, system concept explains suggestions to focus you in in all the nine areas of people activity, of what's going on, who runs the show, but what you, what we, what we, or what you can do about it. I like that title. Listen, the United Independent sounds a little oxymoronic, doesn't it? But it isn't. It really isn't. Which brings me into this point, and I get to you, Tess about the Shawshank Redemption. <clears throat> Mr. Fuller, you brought that up, and you referenced it many, 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 many times about uh, what Andy Duf Dufresne did, focusing in, in on him, what he did and what he didn't do. Yeah, we've got to be balanced here. And um, one of the things that uh, was, was, um, was, was brought out, and you've often said this, that the system of white supremacy is a global prison system. And when I looked at the Shawshank Redemption again, I looked at where Andy Dufresne was at. He was in prison, locked up. But what he did is, is that he got focused on his freedom. And what he had to go through, the, the whippings, the rapes, and all that, but he, he, he used what he had or what was in front of him right there, the warden. He came up with a plan and stuck to it. And it took him years, I understand, to get it, but he finally did it. He, what he had to travel through, that, that excrement to get out, and what he did, and, and, and help Red you know, to go along with him. Mr. Fuller, ob observation on those points there, sir? Oh, yes, what you're saying is true. And in every scene. And then you look at the big picture and, and you look at the small picture. You look at all the pictures. Yes. And look at what the, what is this movie really about? It's about accomplishing what you set out to do, but first of all, you have to know what it is you're setting out to do. The four wants. <laughs> yes. Yes. What is it that you want to do, why do you want to do it, how do you plan to do yes, it? Yes, yes. And what do you expect the constructive result to be? And in the case of hand of the frame, I'm going to get from this prison to say what to nail. And I'm going to be 
taking people on boating trips and making money and on my own have my time and being the master of my time which they have taken away from me here at Shawshank Prison. Yeah. And not only that, because I had some help doing it in the form of a black guy named Red, I'm going to compensate him by have him follow me to say what the nail. What did Red tell him when they were in that yard? He said, look, Andy, you just got these pipe dreams. You are in, up here in Shawshank Prison in Maine, and you're dreaming about a place called Say What the Nail that's down in Mexico somewhere, and that ain't real. Forget about that. That'll drive you crazy. And Andy said, look, I'm going to get busy living or get busy dying. Yes. One way or another. In other words, I'm going to die real quick in this prison. Or I'm going to say what's the nail. And so I got a plan for getting there. Yes. That yes. You, you haven't even thought about it because nobody in here thinks that far ahead. I'm thinking way ahead. All right. You know. And not only that, I'm going to take this, this, this warden down with me, and yes. he's going to help me get out of here. Yes. Before yes. I do, I, 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 he, he's going to shoot himself in the foot. Well, well, it, it turned out the warden shot himself in the head. Yes. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. and Andy arranged that. And mm-hmm. he did it while using what? What the warden gave him. What's one of the things that the warden gave him? A Bible. Exactly. Said, now you read this and you'll be all right. And uh, he is that tool in the Bible. Yes. Uh, yeah, right? that was one of yes. The tool yes. that he used to get out of prison was used by planting it in the Bible because the warden wasn't checking the Bible. I mean, who checks the Bible for that? Chiseling tool that he used took 20, year, yeah, 20 years to do it. Mm-hmm. And to chisel out of the prison. Mm-hmm. And all kinds of connections in that movie. I, I advocate, it's on my movie list, uh, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. But, and it's one of my favorites because I choose movies by the number of lessons. And Shawshank Redemption has a lesson in it in every scene. Yes. If you look for the lessons, mm-hmm. we just go and look at stuff as just entertainment. Black people's entertainment should be, don't bother to entertain yourself except to come away from that entertainment with a lesson that you can use. You're right. Which is um, precisely one of the reasons why I, you know, it was pointed out, because I see the the um, the, the book that you have written. I, I, I see the areas in the book that you have written where, in the movie, he took advantage of the situation of where he was at. Somebody told a me worst, you can't. The, a worst case. Yeah, yeah. And worst he case. walked around thinking. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out now of here. I got to, now it's just a matter of figuring out how I'm going to go wow. about doing it. That's and not exactly only right. get out of here, but stay out. And not uh-huh. only stay out, get out and stay out, but bring down a rotten system in my wake. And not only do that, but take one of the persons who don't even know that I'm including him in that. What did he yeah. tell Red? He said, go up in Buxton if you ever get out of here and go to a wall. Yeah. The, I the, got the, something buried near that wall. Right. Right. And he said, the, what um, is it? And then he said, you'll know when you get there. He said, if you mm-hmm. ever get out of there, this, you know, if you get the sparing, 
and you start thinking about, uh, you know, going back to prison, which is what you'll be on the fast track for doing, because you ain't got no talents to stay out of here. See, but you just do that as a last resort. There's a place right. up in Buxton. Exactly. Go there. Exactly. Right. And See, you'll this, be all right from that point on. Mm-hmm. Red, yeah. I love looking at that scene when Red, <laughs> Red dug that rock up and then found that box and then looked in the box and looked and saw an envelope, and he took that brown envelope, and what did he see? All that money. All that money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and he heard a bird, <laughs> and it always amuses me. He looked up, oh, wow, <laughs> you know. He thought yeah. somebody was checking him out. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 the point is, is that this is where we are at. We are in this yeah. system. So, right. you know, okay, so what that is against us? We have to learn how to learn the, distance, the system against, against that. That's why I like the book in that united yet independent. No matter yeah. what we have to go through, and we are going yeah. to go through stuff. So what? Big deal. Yes. We still go through keep it. doing it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But don't stop. Don't the stop. The end, and it never stop. Yeah. I mean, every day he says, what's the one thing that should be on my mind more than anything? Is getting out of here and staying out. Get out Why? Of here because I'm right. here. I got yeah. two life sentences. Two. Yeah. So and there's no place for me to be. Somebody said that Andy was, you know, was a white man. Okay, so what? You're yeah. a black man. No, it won't make no difference. You we you can't give up. You got to keep your focus. You keep, your keep your focus, focus. and yeah. and then do it. And yes, you're going to face. Uh, we we are going to face a lot of hardships and a lot of things. But you keep on going. What Martin Luther King said: If you can't walk, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, do what? Crawl. If you can't crawl, crawl. what? Roll. But whatever you do or whatever we do, keep on moving. So oh. anyway, uh, going back to uh, the. Uh, the health thing, and as Brother Talif has said, not just health, and I'm speaking about the prostate screening and so forth, but in all areas, even in the finance, Fuller talked about, you know, getting wills and things like that. Brothers and sisters, we can do that. It's just doing it, knowing how to do that. How do you do that? Asking questions. This is what the book is about. Mr. Fuller, we got a minute for this section before we move on. Speak about that book for a minute and what we can do. Yeah, well, we did a lot of talking ourselves, so we didn't get many calls and whatnot. Well, they're, they're there. I'm but, I, but I hope this information is, is crucial. And the eating part, black people need to be, we need to be pioneers now. That's something we can do easily, is that start eating healthy food. And we can even go into business, I mean, saying black people, we're not eating all that grease no more, okay? In fact, we're going to have, we're going to design, because we, a lot of us love the food and whatnot, so we pay attention to food a lot, but we can revolutionize the food industry. Hmm. I mean, it close up some of those places that have been making all them billions, making black people sick. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. All right. Well, anyway, here we, as we're getting ready to close, somebody tell you that you can't do something. You don't have to believe that. You, you don't yeah. have to accept that. You can if you want to. How do you do that? You ask questions and you start doing it. Yeah, are you going to fail? You sure are. But you're going to gain, too. you got to keep on doing it. Anyway, we do thank you for the uh, listening to the, the first hour there. Uh, of the uh, program. We do have a second hour. For those of you that have to go, all right, hopefully um, something was said that could be, that was inspirational to you. You know, of course you don't have to accept that, but hopefully it was. But we hope to see hear from you uh, next week. But for those who are going to stick and stay, do that. Stick and stay, don't go away, because we have another hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. coming up in about five seconds.
You don't fail until you stop. All righty. Welcome back to the second hour of the Counter Wrestling Coaching with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. To get in contact with the show, as Seth has done in New York, all you have to do is call 516-453-9921. Press the number one button if you have a question or comment for Mr. Fuller. And you can get right on, wait till the call screen or screen in. Make sure you give the call screener your name. If you are a first-time caller, make sure you tell the call screener that you are a first-time caller and you will be heard. Yes. Uh, I was. We were told this morning that Mr. Fuller was on the Carl Nelson Show last week. I did hear it live. But we also have it on our web, or on our uh, site at producejustice.com. It's on there. Two hours of uh, program is on there even though Carl was a little late getting Mr. Fuller on, but it's on there so you can get that. Books and materials can be obtained by going to ProduceJustice.com. That is at ProduceJustice.com. And I've been talking about men's health in particular uh, this day, that, that prostate screening. Make sure that you do that or your primary care physician or whatever test that you need to take because men, in, in particular men, we don't talk, so let, let's get that conversation going, and then let's do. Let's do. Ask questions, what to do and what not to do. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go to New York and test. Get ready. Get you right over there. And here we go. All right, Tess, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, sir. Tess, Question are you there? The... Oh, yeah. There yes, sir. Okay. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I have a question regarding the revised edition of the compensatory code on page 438. 438. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Page just states, every person has a major flaw that he or she should not have. What is that major flaw? Oh, whatever it is. See, that's why I call it the United Independent System. You look at yourself and find out what your flaws are. You'll discover whatever is hindering you from doing things that need to be done. That's a flaw. You're put here to solve problems. That's the first assumption based on logic. Nothing the needed full says, because everything the needed full says better be logical. Or oh, that's a flaw. Needed full has got them. Everybody's got them. Needed full mm-hmm. has flaws. Mm-hmm. A whole lot of them. You know, anytime you are not uh, uh, getting constructive results, that means you're flawed. Every move you make is supposed to be a profitable move. Meaning you didn't harm anybody, you helped everybody that had anything to do with you. And the major person that you helped was. You. That's why I call it the United Independent System. You become a whole nation within yourself first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We start talking about building a black nation and all this. No. You nationalize yourself. Otherwise, anything else you're trying to straighten out, you know, it's, it's going to be flawed, but you have to know what the flaws are. You start thinking you ain't got no flaws, and the other people that you are interacting with, and all like that. Oh, no, I mean, you know, uh, the people in my church, we ain't, we ain't into that, uh, or something like that. No, you, even if you're talking about church now, hey, even the Bible that you have says you're flawed. I mean, so it ain't right what Neely Fuller says. So find out what your flaws are and work on correcting them. That's all. 
You don't have to explain anything to anybody or anything like that. Just do it yourself. Now, I have flaws. What are they? And list them. Sit them. You, you can make more sense out of things sometimes when you write things down. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, I have a flaw. I mean, you know, flaw number one. I might have two flaws. I might have 50. Or just about everything you do is flawed. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, list everything that you do. And then say, now, what can I do to get rid of this flaw? And then work on it. And how how are all problems solved? Questions and answers. Questions and answers. Mm-hmm. And you start with that one. Start getting rid of the flaws that you have. And then when you discover flaws in other people, you can just say, and put it in the form of a question. See, don't accuse, don't don't say you have a this is this is a flaw in you. All right, that that incites hostility mm-hmm. and pushback. Mm-hmm. You just say why are you say Vincent? Why are you doing this? And what result is it going to produce? Mm-hmm. It's just like someone advocating that you do something, uh, like I talked about in the earlier hour at great length, I mean, in the area of sex. And they say, well, why don't you, you you just always talking about this girlfriend and whatnot, why don't you start thinking about some other type of sex? I mean, we've got all types of sex going on here now. I mean, this ain't like the old-fashioned days. And so you ask, what is going to be the improvement? So is it an improvement? And it, if it is an improvement, how? What's the constructive result? Show me the constructive result. And think about it like you're supposed to think about anything before you get involved in it. Like, Someone called in on a couple of occasions and asked me something about religion and why why didn't I choose this religion or choose that one? It's because I'm still learning. That's the answer to that question. I mean, it looks like most of the religious people spend a lot of time fighting about religion. And I don't need that kind of fight. So I have a religion that's called for me to say I'm still searching. That's why I always say I'm still learning. As long mm-hmm. as you're still learning, you ain't gotten where you need to be. Exactly. We, mm-hmm. Yeah. See what I mean? As long as you're still learning, and Neely Fuller says that all the time, in every area of activity, not just in religion, trying to figure out which best way to go there. Religion means a strong belief backed up by action. I don't know what to do about white supremacy because I ain't going to be able to do nothing without doing something about that. That's the conclusion I came to. I'm not going to be able to go around them. The white white supremacists say, you don't go around me and do nothing with your black self on my planet. You think you're going to go around me? You're going to pass by me without my permission? You go where I send you, boy. Negro Neely. And you know it. Now, you can impress other black people with your black self, which is what all of you do. You spend all your time trying to impress each other. You don't impress me at all, because there ain't nothing about you to impress me. I don't have to mm-hmm. ask you anything. I tell you what to do. I don't care what religion you got. You hide it over there in that, that in the ghetto, and don't you come out. <laughs> yeah. Don't you get in my face with your religion. You know mm-hmm. better than that. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Now, oh. when I look around, that's a flaw in us. We don't know what to do about white supremacy. Why? Because it's still the greatest show on earth. Mm-hmm. That's well, nearly full. He's still trying. He, he's still well, trying. Trying, ain't, trying ain't, 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 you know, hey, keep on trying, boy. Keep on That's trying. That's what they tell mm-hmm. me. They tell me that. If they say anything yeah. to me at all, but really white people don't even talk to me because they say I ain't that significant. And they're correct. When white people come looking for you, to talk to you, that means, hey, <laughs> you are somehow disturbing their business. Hmm. And they're going to set that straight. <sighs> they're yep. not looking for you. It means you ain't doing nothing against them. Hmm. All righty. All right. Thank you, uh, uh, Tess, in uh, New York, New York. Justice Warrior, I agree with you. Stuck in the European tradition. Yeah, that's what we've been taught. We have to learn how to unstuck ourselves. How about that one? Uh, Mr. Fuller, I was... Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me see here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. This is from the uh, Gmail's. Um, Mr. Bobby, please do not mention my name. But uh, he said, Mr. Fuller, he says this. Is the possible TikTok ban an example of white supremacists using economic power? Yes, if it's white supremacists who are doing it. That's the answer. Questions and answers, that's the answer to that question. If it's white supremacists doing it, why? Because the white supremacists do nothing except something that's going to make white supremacy stronger. Anytime they come around you, they come around you with one thing in mind. I am looking, and they'll be polite. The refined ones are always polite. I mean, their courtesy is way above board. They say nice things, I mean, in thousands of different ways. But they have one thing in mind. I'm going to control everything about this black person's existence and do it in such a way he got no idea that I'm controlling him. If I want Mm -hmm. to. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. It's called white supremacy. It's called white supremacy. The greatest thing on earth. And here in 2024, that show is the greatest show the world has ever seen. Called the system of white supremacy. Not the United States of America government. Stop saying that. Stop mixing it up. Something that has nothing to do with the other at all. I keep saying that. And black people call in on the show and say, well, you know, America, uh, you already shot yourself in the foot. You're talking about white supremacy. There's no such thing as America. That's a dream. That's a concept. White people themselves call it a work in progress, and that is an excellent work, by the way. If you're talking about America or Africa or Asia, these are works in progress. They don't exist. There's no such thing as an African continent. Hasn't ever been. You got tribes, and a lot of them will let you know it. Hmm. The only thing I care about is my tribe, and everything else. Uh, don't talk to me; I ain't interested. Okay. I mean, you know, are you a member of my tribe? 
Well, get out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you talk about this African stuff. You know, we talk that stuff, but everything boils down to, are you a mm-hmm. member of the tribe? Mm-hmm. And Lord. the white supremacists look at that and say, that's a weakness. And oh. we will export that to the hilt. To the hilt, yes. Okay. All righty. I uh, can't mention the person's name, but thank you for answering that question. Before I get to you, Nicola, and thank you for calling back, I'd like to thank uh, uh, all of you who responded to uh, the Reverend Jeremiah A. Wright's speech. Hell you talking about? I had so many responses uh, from that. For those of you who did not, who have not, check that out and hear what he had to say and how relevant it is. And by the way, he made that in 2016, but... If you didn't know what I just told you, you would think that he did it yesterday or Sunday. It's called Hell You Talking About by Jeremiah A. Wright. Dale, I want to thank you for uh, listening to that and and what it brought out to you. All right, Rita Triple A, check that out. All right, Nicolette, thank you for calling in because we didn't we we didn't get you last week, but we got you now. Get ready. Here she is. I don't know if you're going to be a lawyer one day, but sometimes you sound like a Nicolette. Do your thing. Okay, so I was talking to a very respectful person, so my question is for her today. Neither Fuller to expound on what did... What's the Hello? Point of you talking about Bob Hope and the... Um, and the model. What 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 mentality? What did you want us to receive from that? Betty Grable. Betty Grable. Was a woman. Hello, oh, Mr. Fuller. Yes. I yeah, she was asking you a question. Yeah, she was asking uh-huh. you. Hey, Nicola, uh-huh. repeat that question again. Okay, uh, I want to say I'm asking you what was the symbolism of you telling us about Bob Hope um, having the model on his show during a war, or taking him, or as him being a comedian presenting a model to the soldiers. What was the point of? Uh, I was talking to a very respectful person, and I think we missed the concept or the example that you was using for that. A white woman. I mean, that's what war is all about. From the perspective that Bob Hope was talking about, I mean, he he made it graphic. He had the woman there. He said, in case you guys, you know, sometimes have a slip in your mind about what World War II is all about and why you're fighting, said, this is your answer. (laughs) And the guys all cheered. As if to say, yeah, well, you know, hey, we show pictures and whatnot of, you know, who we want to get back to. I mean, you know, you get to know somebody and whatnot, one of the first things you want to do is, well, this is my wife, all right? This is what it's all about. This is what, you know, this Gettysburg, you know? <laughs> When white people talk, that's, hey, you're talking about the Holy Grail. A black, a white female vagina is the Holy Grail of what everything is about in the system of white supremacy. When, they, when all the smoke clears and all the bodies been piled up, whatnot, this is what it's about. When you don't make that a priority, you're not doing nothing. Even all you black males, if you don't put that white woman up on a throne, but then a lot of white people, see, when you spread poison for somebody else, like they're doing with all this sexual confusion, you get some of the poison on yourself. Now that's, right now, that's being damaging to the alpha white male. Because now you've got more and more conflict going on between the white male and the white female. 
That's escalating. Why? Because they tried to separate and done a pretty good job of the black male with the black female. And having black males chasing the white male. The black male chasing the white male. And they want black females to be left with nobody but each other. And then what do they do with the black female? The long-range plan is have black females marry each other and join the Army and Navy and Air Force all over the world and die on battlefronts while the black males are chasing each other or, or chasing the ultimate prize, a white male and saying, let's get married. And it's right there in your face. Now, the downside of that is the white male is letting a lot of these things get out of hand that's not in the plan. And that is they don't want to make too many white males into females in order to get enough people on board to continue the system of white supremacy by faking out everybody's sexuality. In the Christian church among black males, including the preachers, and that's why you're having the Pope even changing his mind. So we're paying out all this money about what's going on behind the scenes. Well, let's change what's going on behind the scenes and maybe incorporate that into Catholicism. And maybe let let it spread to all the other religions since it's halfway there anyway. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, Nicole, did you, uh, okay, did you have a, another question on that here? No, I thank you. And I did have something from last week, but I can't even think of because he kind of blew me back because I want to digest that and understand what he just said on that. So I might okay. have something next week. I appreciate y'all in my way. Okay. Okay, Nicolette. Thank you very much. All righty. All right. Uh, I want to throw something out there, but maybe uh, maybe I'll hold off. It had to do with the uh, Pope, and then I'm going to put a little uh, parenthesis there and put an S in that parenthesis. Uh, those who understand code know that, uh, or put this put this before you. Maybe maybe this won't be too bad. Do you think there's more than one Pope? And if it is, let me know. Especially the um, Gmailers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fuller, this is the Gmail here. Um, let me see here. And this is uh, going back just a little bit. But uh, Shay said this. Now, this is uh, uh, to readdress this. Uh, let me see here. It says, uh, I wrote a few weeks back asking about staying in the question lane. I doubt that it was possible to... I doubted that it was possible to always remain in the question lane. This is a, 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 rep, a repeat what we're going to update a little bit. I thought we would surely have to make statements at some point in time. Mr. Fuller, Mr. Fuller just doubled down on his stance that we should remain in the question lane at all times. I'm slowly becoming convinced that it's possible but it's difficult because I've never seen such a conversation. Now, Mr. Fuller, again, is there any way that you might be able to give more examples from your experience of how such a conversation could run? 
And then please let me. Oh, okay. Yeah. All righty. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Uh, no, all problems. Save you. It's best. I found from the experimenting and from experience that once I start making statements, then the con- conversation stops being a conversation and starts melding into an argument. It morphs into an argument. There's a difference between a conversation and an argument. An argument means you're going to have conflict. And even sometimes an argument will lead to a fight. But a conversation always leads to a constructive result. So what's the mechanics for doing that? Stay in the question lane. At least one person stay in that question lane, and that reduces the possibility of an argument. Because questions and answers are just questions and answers. So you can tell the person, well, I don't have a question now. Why? Because you don't have a question. Or I will have a question later on or something like that. All right? But that's why I say just adopt what I say. I'm still learning. So if you're still learning, it means you ask questions and you get answers because there's no such thing as a question without an answer. And it's always going to profit the person who is asking the question. There's always, even if you know the answer, put it in the form of a question anyway, because you know your answer. You might hear an answer that is better than the answer that you have given yourself. And so it's a lose, it's a win-win situation, all right? And it beats an argument of any kind. It's questions and answers. Now, the caller said it's difficult to do. Well, you tell the person. Now, it's difficult for me. I I feel like I want to say something. Now, you can always answer a question. That's when you make a statement. That's the only way. You know, you ask a question. The person is going to have to make a statement in order to answer your question. But... The general practice should be for you to stay in the question lane. And and saying that it's difficult, that's true. But not really if you just say, I don't have a question at this time that will give me what I want. So I'll try to think of, I started to make a statement, but I'm not going to make that statement until I think of a better way to approach what I really want and do it with a question. That will be a better way. Mm-hmm. So it means you just postpone your question. They do it in court all the time. So yeah. we, don't have yeah. answers. we don't have answers to that right now. We're going to have to do some further investigations or We're going to have to postpone it until tomorrow. Maybe we will have an answer tomorrow. They do it all the time. Say, we don't have an answer. And we don't go past. When we don't have an answer, we don't don't just jump to something else. You know? No, it's crucial to get an answer. All questions have answers. And you don't move to the second question until the first question is asked and answered. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Mr. Fuller, this is precisely why uh, I recommend the, the, your book, because it has suggestions in it. And the more I read it, I find out things to do and not to do. Uh, for me, I don't know about anyone else, but I usually just think one way. Just, just 
That I didn't think about the other half or the balance in life. The universe comes with balance, and I always just went one way. But now I'm trying to make myself be balanced. That's why I say what to do and what not to do, rather than just concentrating on just one thing. In other words, what to do. I didn't think about what not to do, but now I'm thinking, which is one of the things that the book uh, has helped me and hopefully inspired other people that we can get by going to ProduceJustice.com. As a matter of fact, that's a good way to end this segment. Okay. All right, let's take a break here, our last break here. You're listening to the Counter Racing Co Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, and we hope that um, you are enjoying today's program. But to get in contact with the show, you know the numbers, what to do. All you have to do is call 516 453 9921. Wait for the call screener to come on and then give the call screener your name so that I can give uh, you your proper introduction when it is your time. Yes, just as Wayne has done in the ATL. Thank you, Wayne. We're going to get to you. Um, so I was, uh, we were informed this morning that the interview that Mr. Fuller had on the Carl Nelson Show is up on our website. That is at ProduceJustice.com. If you missed it, it's there. Go get it. And as I mentioned, uh, you can get the books there, too. Reread it. Keep on reading it. Re-read, even if you've read it before, read it and understand it, and then let's start acting on it. Do what you need to do to do what you need to do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that's going to be it. Oh, yeah. If you want to get on the uh, the uh uh, <laughs> chat room, all you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com and you want to get on where it says programs you click that bad boy on and then when you do that you're looking for the Produce Justice Show click that and then the uh, window opens up for you to join the chatters and you can get in there, good conversation today, good conversation today in there very compelling, very thought provoking good questions in there, you may want to do that Okay, okay, let's get into this last half of an hour, and we're going to go down to the ATL, Hartsfield-Jackson Airport, the busiest airport in the world, Wayne, get ready, Wayne, all righty, let's see here, okay, there we go, Wayne, good morning, you are on with Mr. Fuller, what is your question? Uh, long life to you. Long life and prosper to you, Mr. Bodge and Mr. Doctor Fuller. Thank you, sir. Uh, the first thing I want, I got one VGQ and one question. But the first okay. thing I want to ask you, uh, I did fill out the request for the book, but I haven't got a response yet. And uh, I moved to my VGQ. Uh, okay. What I like to say about the the story that Doctor Fuller said uh, last week about Jalopy. That was a very interesting story, a very Yeah, Jalopy, story. yeah. <laughs> yes. It was a very it had me thinking all week. And he was he was not confused about himself. People was confused about him. Okay. He was not concerned about the future or the past. He he was just con- concerned about the now. The now, what he can do now. He wasn't confused at all. And uh, there's a lot of things that we can do. We can do we can do a whole lot. The first thing we got to do is change the way we think. Okay. We got to want change ourselves. We got to want change. If we don't want change, there's not going to be any change. And we got to change the way we think. We've been, we've been taught a lot of things that's not right and not true. And the thing about it, we got to want truth and we got to want right. And we got to ask ourselves a lot of questions. We got to yes. ask ourselves a lot of questions and we got to we gotta get the answers to make some changes in our life first, like Dr. Fuller was saying. I didn't hear the whole, the whole half of the show, but we got we to gotta want change. And we got to yes. ask ourselves a lot of questions and we got to get answers. But the main thing is that we got to ask questions. Ask and get questions, change. yeah. And okay. I'm, and I'm going to go to the, the question. Uh, Dr. Fuller, uh, this, I'm going to elaborate on the question that I asked last week. Uh, you said uh, you would you got like 500 books that you wouldn't want to put in to the book that you already wrote. 
and you also said that you got a lot of sticky tape around the desk with notes. If you can take two of those sticky tapes to put into the books with the with the with the questions that you got from sticky tape, what would it be? If I had to pick two books, no, two two other. You said you got a lot of sticky tapes all over your desk with a lot of questions that you would have liked to put into the book, a lot of notes. If you can take two of those notes that you got in your desk to add to the book, what would it be? If, if I could take two notes to add to the book, what would they be? Yeah, the two notes that you got in your desk. You said you got a bunch of notes stick all over your desk that you would have would have wanted to add to the book. What would two or the two notes that you would like to add to the book? What would it be? Two, two I don't know. questions or I don't I don't yeah. In answer to that question, I do not know. I would have to go through all of these little notes, scraps of paper and all like that and pick out what I would consider the most important of all of them. And really, to tell the truth, I'm not going to do that because it would take up, oh, my goodness, how many years? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. You'd like my desk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, and, and not only that, I'd like to have the summation of I have a stack of books that's nothing but quotes of different people. Uh, I think I have. I'm looking at them right now, right here by my desk on a little folding table. I have everything from the Bible uh, to Acts of Faith by Yana Van Zant. I have uh, Will Durant's The Story of Philosophy. Now, these are books that are primarily... There's a lot of quotations in them. That includes the Bible. I have another one called Divine Help. I can't quite make out who that's by. Okay. Now, these are books that, if you would ask me, for example, which book would I choose first? I don't know in answer to that question. I would just pick up any of them, because those are the next books I have in mind if I ever get around to it. And it's about, let's see, I have maybe about 15 of them that are off of a shelf of about 500, okay? And I said, now I'm going to concentrate on what's in these books if I ever get around to it. This, this stack of books here, about 15 of them, has been there for some time. <laughs> I haven't gotten around to not one of them yet, all right, including the, getting back to the Bible, because there's a lot of quotes in the Bible that give excellent advice, particularly in the New Testament. Yes, sir. Right. And uh, anybody that's familiar with the Bible knows that, Corinthians and all that. Uh, so I just say, learn whatever it is. Look at what's going on right now and try to codify it. Exactly. And that's the best right. that I can do other than that, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Codified okay. means... Now, in this thing, this problem, usually it comes in the form of a problem, what's the best thing to do and say about this problem? And don't turn loose to it until you come up with an answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm. means you might have to talk to a lot of people or read a lot of books or newspapers or whatever. You never know where information you can right. use can, comes from. Yeah. Because we're looking for constructive results here. Yes, that's all you're looking for. Mm -hmm. If I do okay. this, will it produce a constructive result? Mm -hmm. Okay. Always ask. That, that is the primary question because you're looking for constructive results 
in every move that you make and every breath that you take. That's right. <laughs> All right, uh, Wayne, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, he brought up uh, a jalopy, but uh, before we go back into that, uh, what is Mr. Fuller, what, what is your take, and you did mention it in the earlier, uh, maybe in the first hour, uh, about um, the uh, stuff that's going in, I think he said Li- Liberia, and also uh, your take on what's going on in Haiti. Now, I have to remember, at least I, I look at it this way, that I'm looking at it from a, a white perspective because the news is sanitized. But you've been around and you for a long time. You've seen wars, rumors of wars, and uh, different types of strategies and all that kind of stuff. Uh, wars that are not reported in places that is still going on. Uh, what is your take on Haiti and, and, and Liberia and, and other places that may have that do have conflict going on? The uh, Liberia and Haiti, uh, under the system of white supremacy, the white supremacists themselves are examples of what. The white supremacists say, now we want to use this, we want to use Liberia, and we want to use Haiti as an example, two examples of what happens when white people have a little experiment calling letting black people go for themselves, to use a cliche term. Mm-hmm. Black people on their own even though the white supremacists, when you look at it, they set that up for failure. Yes, okay. See what I mean? But they're making it look like, and a lot of black people are bought into it. Now, these are Liberia. These are black people who it was called liberated people. That's where the word Liberia came from. All right? And... Uh, under a, a man, a white man named James Monroe. Uh, you know, this this is black people on their own. If you want to shine an example of black people on their own, white people don't have nothing to do with them. All right, and they're they're showing, hey, you let us go for ourselves and be cut off and whatnot. We can do it. We know okay, wait, 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 wait a minute, Mr. Fuller. What? I'm getting a report that this our sound is distorted. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Um, hopefully, it's not. If it is being distorted, can somebody in in control uh, fix that? Oh, okay, Mr. Fuller, go ahead, and then somebody let me know that uh, it's been corrected. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Haiti, historically speaking, is supposed to be a shining example. Of white people got their hands off. Black people are doing everything, showing all of their knowledge going back thousands of years and whatnot. These are the show places. Every black person should go to Liberia to learn what a real civilization looks like. Or go to Haiti. And then they go back, the white supremacists go back behind the bush. And this laugh, laugh, laugh. They say, now, we set this whole thing up. as Oh, you're talking about black people being on their own. Haiti and uh, Liberia. You just got here from Mars, so you just want to know about these black people and what it looks like on their own. Well, we got a couple of places we're going to show you. All right? And the white supremacists look at each other and wink and say, Haiti, you want to go by, you know, they got their independence, and the black people in Liberia, they have their independence, you know, might be a lot of confusion in South Africa and all like that. So these, these are examples of what black people on planet Earth, on their own, look like. And they use Haiti, and they use Liberia, and they wink at each other while they're doing it, because they say, we have made those places complete disasters. Yeah, when you go there, 
you see black people. Yeah, you see lots of black people. And they are on their own. They are what black liberation looks like, according to the white supremacists. Hands off. No white folks. You ain't going to hardly see no white folks nowhere. All black. And this is what black success looks like. Liberia and Haiti. Go there. Take a look. And then they wink at everybody, you know, <laughs> uh, that they want to get what that wink means. See, we have made disasters out of both of those places, and they are permanent disasters. They ain't going to never be nothing. But we claim we ain't had nothing to do with it. That's black people on their own. They'll tell yeah. you that. We are independent. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they'll tell you. Look at them. That's what, that's what you want to be? You know? All you black yeah. people that believe that go to Liberia. All you black people, you know, that talk about separation and all that, go to Haiti. You know, you'll be on your own. You can do your thing. And they laugh, laugh, laugh. Right. Behind the fence. Exactly. But, yeah. the, but if you understand white supremacy, you, 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 you look at that and say, well, I don't think nobody believes that because you don't see nobody flocking there. See, right. and, and this is what you said at the beginning of every program, what you just said. If you don't understand white if supremacy. If you don't understand white supremacy, you ain't going to understand nothing. No. What it is and how it works. Yes. <laughs> yes. You said that yes. right there. Every program. Yeah, over and over again. Over and over and over. What it is and how it works. If you don't understand that, everything is going to confuse you. Thank you. And a confused people will always be dominated by whom? Somebody who is not confused. You know, this is why it's imperative, I feel, this is why it's imperative that that, that the publication that you have written you know, you, you you have to read it over and over because you might miss some, something that you didn't get the first time. But you're trying to understand this system, what it is and how it works. I'm still trying to do that. What it what it will do, what it will not do, what to say, what not to say. Uh, constantly. I, not because you say you, I'm still learning. I'm still learning because I don't know these things. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Fuller. Okay, now, Wayne had talked about jalopy, and it was a very interesting uh, story. In fact, you brought out some things that I didn't know. But quickly, for those who don't know, because somebody did ask about uh, that term, and they said that you would know what jalopy uh, meant, and I didn't understand that until you uh, mentioned about that. But just a refresher for those who don't know the uh, little story about jalopy, um, can you explain that again? The law there was what, uh, in later years, I, I heard that the poet, the black poet, Portress, uh, Gwendolyn Brooks said, has written some type of poem or something. And I never read the poem about nothing but a plain black boy or something like that. Uh -huh. And uh, this was back in the 1940s. There was a okay. Now I'm not hearing person. you, there, but there you go. Maybe there's something going on here because I couldn't hear you. Hello, okay. in the 1940s in Muskogee, Oklahoma, which is where I was born, there was a person named Tom Carew. But he never used that name except to sign his name, and that's the only thing he could sign. The only thing he could do when it came to writing is sign his name. He didn't know how to read or write anything. And somebody had taught him somewhere, wherever that was, how to read and write his 
name. He could always recognize his name, and he could write his name. Somebody painstakingly, evidently, told him, well, at least you're going to know how to write your name, or you'll know your name when you see it written, but you won't know anything else. So he was a, a dishwasher in my father's restaurant, and he didn't know anything about his childhood except the, the main thing that stood out. Nothing stood out. I mean, his parents, what they looked like, or who they were, nothing like that. He just said, he, you know, his, he lived mostly in the woods and just wandered from place to place. And back in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, that was very common mm -hmm. for black people just to wander the railroad tracks. Usually, they knew the railroad tracks would be going somewhere where there was something, some people, other than where they were. So they just got in the habit of being what you call hobos or drifters, mm -hmm. all kind of names for them. Jalopy was apparently one of these people. And he came to Muskogee, Oklahoma, wandered there, not knowing where he was, he crossed state lines, just walking and riding rails, or catching a ride, not having, going someplace, but not knowing where they're going. Just trying to find some place where they could say, well, this is some place where I can eat mm. and sleep. You're breaking up again. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Go ahead, oh, go ahead. Continue. No, continue. continue. I don't know what's going on. Continue, though. Anyhow, he wound up at my father's cafe by following the railroad tracks. We were one block away from the railroad tracks in Muskogee, in Muskogee Oklahoma. The, the core of the colored section of town in Muskogee, Oklahoma, in the 1940s and 50s, probably going back to the 30s, was Second Street. Second Street was one block away from First Street in a small town. It was, at that time, a very busy town. It was farm country, and people, farmers, that was the basis for his economy were small farms, and people would sell their produce, produce in the town called Muskogee. They come from all around. Mm. Black people had a lot of small mm. farms, raising cabbage, putting it on a wagon, bringing it to town on weekends. And my father had a business, and the town was slowly dying because people were moving away. But what gave the town some life support was World War II, which gave a lot of towns some life support because trains came through, loaded with people, and people had to get off the trains and eat and all like that at some point, would not. You couldn't feed everybody on the, on, you know, on, on the train, so that's mostly white people. So black people went mostly to the towns and cities from wherever they were, yeah, because that's where the little bit of money was. And Jalopy was one of those drifters that followed that crowd. Uh, started in the 1940s and on into the 1950s. The last time I saw Jalopy was in the 1950s. But before then, in the 1940s, is when he really came to Muskogee, Oklahoma. And like a lot of people that drifted and whatnot, black people, they had dishwashing jobs. Because even in small towns, they had a lot of little restaurants that needed a dishwasher. The dishwasher in most towns, or in a lot of them, was a black person. 
That's a little job that they could get. Washing dishes by hand, scrubbing big pots and all like that. And uh, slicing onions, uh, peeling potatoes, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, Jalopy was one of those people. And your father trusted him, correct? Yes, my father. I asked him, I said, why do you keep Jalopy around here? He said, two things. He's always here, because he's got no other place to go. I give him a room upstairs in the hotel, because my father had a hotel and a cafe. And uh, he's always here, and he won't steal. And I said, yeah, but Jalopy, you know, he can't read or write, so he messes up some stuff and whatnot. Uh, reading the newspaper bottom side of us, trying to learn. But the main thing was, you know, black people being weak people like we are today, pick on each other. They find somebody weaker than you are, you pick on them. So everybody picks on Jalopy. I did. Okay, and I regret that to this day. Nobody would help him. And my father said, I keep him around here because nobody will help him. Neely said, I'm here to help people. Hmm. Okay. All right. And they well, called him Jalopy because he was always trying to fix some cars. He was trying to mm -hmm. help himself. Yes. Okay. Nobody would help him. Okay. Um, yeah, we're breaking up badly here. I don't know what the problem is, but anyway, uh, we'll we'll try to do better. Problem might be me. No, I don't think it's you, Mr. Fuller, because it's been going in and out. But ma but maintenance said it's it's not on their end, so I don't know what's going on. Well, um, the code is all about helping people. Yes. Helping people, yeah. helping yourself mostly. That's why I okay. call it United Independent. Okay. You unite yourself first. Exactly. You can't help nobody else unless you help yourself. Exactly. You know that when you get on a boat or an airplane, would not strap the child in. You strap the child into the seat first. Okay. Then you get in the driver's seat and strap yourself in. All right. Well, we're getting ready to wrap this bad boy up. But before we do here, I had a comment. Somebody had a comment. Justice Warrior had a comment about um, the little take that you had on Haiti. He said, Mr. Fuller, speaking about Haiti, they were once independent, Haiti that is, but why don't you also tell the truth about how all the European powers conspired and united to take them out? So if you're going to tell the story, Mr. Fuller, tell the entire story and the history and not just part of it in particular what we see today in Haiti. Okay, well, that's a, that's an assignment for all of us that we want to know about, you know, Haiti and what happened and what the French did and how they kicked the French out in 18, whatever it was, and what happened after that and how the uh, Western nations conspired against Haiti even until this day. Yeah, that's a history lesson that all of us can learn. So why don't we all do that? Mr. Fuller, you may have an assignment to check out that information on Haiti yourself. But anyway, I just said it. I said yeah. it a while ago. The white supremacists are winking about it. They use it as what they call black success, but they messed it all up, and they intend to keep it that way. Uh, in fact, I heard years ago that the white supremacists had gotten together and said, hate is not, not going to ever be anything. Why? Hmm. Because we are going to see to it that they never, ever, I mean, I mean forever and ever and ever, that the hate yeah. will never be nothing because we're going to make it sure. We, with all of our power, we're going to see to it that hate ain't going to never be nothing. Yeah, I did read that. Uh, oh, yeah, Western I've heard Nation. that. I've heard yeah, that when I was did, going did to grade that, school. Yes. All righty, well, discussion. guess what? We've come to the end of the program. We just have a matter of seconds. So thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, callers. Thank you, everybody, those that were on the chat and all that, all that, engineers, Robert, Sharon, Moonpot. 
Oh, thank you very much. We hope to do better next week. Forgive us for all the mistakes that we've made. ProduceJustice.com is where you can get the books. Final 10 seconds to you, Mr. Fuller. Get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com. All right, everybody, next week. Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.